Welcome back to my channel, Mother Suckers. Hey, I'm giving you natural light today, so I'm giving y'all a different angle. Happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are having a great midweek. Happy hump day. So today's topic, I've been thinking about this for some time, and I was like, you know what? Not right now. Don't got the energy. But today, hey! I've got seats. I really wanna get into the evolution of Miss Natalie Nunn. As you get older, you get wiser, you get more experiences. Hopefully you learn something along the way and you are a better person. However, with Natalie Nunn, I have yet to see her evolve. And you know, I, I really wanna say she's devolving. I know she's getting her bag, she has the baddies, Baddies West, the new Baddies show. So I know she's getting her bag from that. I just really wish if Natalie Nunn would get her bag silently behind the scenes, or if she did come on the show, it would be of more of a mentor status, more of a therapist status, like more of a, I was you when I was 19, 20, 21. And now at, how old is she? At 38, I can give you girls some guidance, some wisdom, some help. If 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 nothing at all, a, an example, right, of how to go from being a bad girl, reckless, to being a businesswoman, a wife, a mother, there's supposed to be a difference. Where is the growth? So I saw this clip of Natalie on Twitter, and this was after she got slapped by Krishan. She got off the bus and wanted to fight Krishan. She wanted the producers to let Krishan off the bus. And the first thing I thought was, isn't Krishan pregnant? Why? Neither here nor there. I don't watch the show, so I don't know the details. You can let me know down in the comment section if you if you watch the show. I was a vivid Bad Girls Club watcher back in the day. I watched the season as it played out with Natalie Nunn on the Bad Girls Club. So me seeing her persona now, it was very surprising to me because I'm like, hold on. You were, Natalie was all the way against everything that she represents now. Natalie was borderline racist, but let's say anti-black. Um, <laughs> but she was classist, she was racist, anti-black, colorist as all hell, um, you know, bougie, spoiled. She was like, you know, I'm from LA, I'm from LA, I come from money, I, 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 I don't do this ghetto shit with these black girls, these black girls are ghetto, even before she met them. So, me seeing her now, it's giving black fishing. <laughs> it's giving, you're pretending for your new audience. Um, so let's check out this clip. Well, bring her the f outside. I'm not playing with you, my nigga. I swear to God, I'm a mother life, bro. It was given, whoa, Vicky. Like it was given, like, I'm just gonna throw a bunch of black urban vernacular, A-A-V-E, like, and try to form a sentence. Yo, <laughs> no ma'am, I get being upset, I get wanting to fight, but it just did not flow naturally out of her mouth into the atmosphere. <laughs> it gave whoa, Vicky. Everybody knows me here, not only because I went to USC, I run with an elite group of people. Chris Brown's at high, do you like Chris Brown? No. What do you mean? No. He beat up his girlfriend. Why would I Who like Who cares? Because she was girl. a punk bitch. She got her ass beat for a reason. There's no reason to beat a girl. Yeah, Rihanna's crazy. You don't know her. I don't crazy. care. You don't hit somebody. She's crazy. You can work everything out with words. You don't need to with hit words. somebody. Well, my first instinct is, Annie, we should be roommates. You're going to get the ghetto black bitch. She's going to punk you all the time. So yeah, so this is the Natalie that I remember. Natalie grew up in 
white supremacist environments. She has a white mother named Karen. She identified more with her white side. And it's okay. Like, it's okay to be biracial. It's okay to identify with whatever you're more accustomed to seeing growing up. But the fact that she literally hated her black side, she hated the black aesthetic, she hated blackness and constantly degraded black women, specifically dark skinned black women. And she made a comment saying, you know, one of the girls were too black. One of the girls, her nose looked like a gorilla. And she said that dark skinned girls did not like her growing up. Well, and this is a prime example. Like this is what we really be talking about. I'm not saying that dark skinned girls never bullied lighter skinned girls, but this is a prime example, right? Throw a stone, hide your hand. You call somebody too black and then mad when she slapped the shit out of you. You call somebody gorilla nose and mad when she says, I don't like you. It's not your complexion, baby girl. It's your disgusting personality. Okay. Because dark skinned women have light skinned women friends. We have biracial friends. We have mixed friends. We have Latina friends. We have white friends. My friends literally come in all colors, <laughs> like literally. People are now having the vocabulary to express themselves, to defend themselves. So again, when you see people like this saying that dark skin girls never liked me, I'm gonna go ahead and say nobody liked you. But when the dark skin girls didn't like you, it was a problem because you already felt superior to them. I mean, it's giving classes and egregious, okay? Okay, come on, Maya. <laughs> come on, Maya from Girlfriend. So when you see Natalie now adopting that same aesthetic, that same culture, that same vernacular that she shitted on. And yes, it was years ago, but again, that's the lifestyle that you grew up in and that's the lifestyle that you feel like is more superior. Why all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, 15 years, why later down the line, is this a culture that, that you're now benefiting off of? And you gotta be careful about people like that. They're, she's actually benefiting off of the trauma of these young black and brown girls. She doesn't care. She's not anyone's friend. Natalie's friend is money and, and that's okay. But again, I would have hoped that she would have evolved. Let's bring back bad girls, but let's spin it. Let's twist it. Let's make it more positive. Like even if you have the drama, cause the drama, the fights, that's going to bring the viewers. So even if you have all of that stuff at the end of the day, let's do a therapy session. Okay. At the end of the day, you know, take it to the boxing ring exercise. Like I, I like the fact that her and Tommy went into the boxing ring. You got a problem with somebody, you put on the gloves, you go into the ring. And at the end of that week, we going to sit down and have some therapy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like and Natalie has completely shape shifted. The more you are colorist, classist, and egregious, the more that chin will grow. Chinocchio is your new name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Mm, this hairstyle is, I'm, I'm really living for this. I gotta put a little, um, a little bobby pin back here just to hold that down. But yes, queen. So we see some people devolving and some people are actually evolving. I wanted to end this video on a positive note. Shout out to Angela. I am actually really, really, really proud of Angela. I've been following her journey. She's been removing all of her fillers, all of that silicone, all of that plastic. She's been removing all of that and just embracing her natural self. And I know some people are like, oh, this could just be for clout or this could just be for, um, I don't know, like, you know, like she could just be pulling a stunt, but when people do negative shit for clout, y'all follow them, y'all support them, y'all big them up. So I feel like even if she is, let's, let's, let's promote positivity. You know, even if it's fake, even if it's not real, let's promote positivity. And I, I've watched a lot of interviews with Angela and I personally don't think it's fake. I see like this light in her eye when she talks and when she does these interviews, she did an interview recently with Angela Yee and the Jasmine brand on Angela's new podcast, Way Up. I watched the, the interview and it's like, it's like, she's literally born again. You know, it's like this child, she she has like this light in her eye and this energy about her and I, I feel like she's honestly being genuine I remember like being disgusted when <laughs> her and that Nigerian girl were collabing and selling bleach products and I'm like Angela like you're light-skinned anyway like you don't even bleach like there are literally dark-skinned women who are harming themselves and want to bleach their skin like 
why would you promote that type of product? And that's when I was really done with Black China. But I see the, the glow up. I see the difference in her. And they asked her, why did you start removing the fillers? And she said that one day she looked in the mirror and she felt like she looked like a cartoon character. Like the cheeks were just too much. The lips were so big. You couldn't see her teeth when she talked or when she smiled. And these are the things that we say, you know, as commentators, like, you know, the fillers and stuff, it's fine if you want to fill this or that, but they're getting too excessive to now you look like caricatures or now you, you don't look like women anymore. Like you, you look like a complete, completely something else. So I'm glad that she admitted that. And she's like, no, like this, this doesn't look good. And that's exactly what I was saying in the beginning. As we get older, you know, you go through childhood, adolescence, right? Puberty young woman, like as you get older, you are supposed to mature. You are supposed to get better. You are supposed to be able to teach the younger girls lessons, things that you went through, things that you learned. You're not supposed to be repeating what the younger girls are doing. That's, that's not, <laughs> that's not the purpose of, of, of living a long life, right? You're supposed to be able to teach the younger generations. And so when she was 19, she got silicone, she got illegal silicone injections. They are illegal. Um, and she spoke about the complications, you know, her butt would bruise, it would harden, it would, oh, it was just so, so many complications. Um, and even to remove the silicone, it was an eight hour surgery. The silicone, it kept clogging up the, the utensil that the doctor was using. So every time it would clog it, like these little balls and like, uh, like some crazy stuff that he was like telling me, he would have to take it, un unscrew like the machine, clean it out, sterilize it, and do all that stuff. Oh, and then wow. having to like shape it and work around it. And, and the, the material wow. was so hard. <laughs> okay. So he's like, get, you know, yeah. getting it like, ah. But Damn. you know, I didn't even have any like, I had a little bit of bruising, mm -hmm. like just a little bit sore. Like I was like walking around the same day. Everybody's like, yo, you need to lay down. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm like, absolutely not. Are, is silicone illegal or is it legal? Illegal. It's illegal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if it can, it can also travel. Okay. And it can travel to your lungs, and if if the person that's doing it doesn't know like the anatomy, and it gets into your muscle, it could get into your bloodstream, it could kill you like instantly. Okay. So I've had a lot of procedures done. This is my fifth boob job. I've had liposuction three times. I've had fillers. I had butt argument augmentation. I'm gonna go get my butt ox uh, reduced and also to my breast. Angela says it's her previous buttocks augmentation that she was most concerned about and a big reason she wanted to share her story. Now 34, she received illegal silicone injections when she was just 19 years old. The extremely dangerous procedure was not performed by a licensed doctor. This is a regular person that's doing it. So they're getting whatever it is, substance that they're doing and giving it to you. They're not gonna tell you, hey, you know you could possibly die. How was your health affected by the silicone injections? My rear end would get like super like inflamed and it would get really, really hard and like really hot. It was very scary. Looking at her on the interview and seeing her talk and I, like, I just felt like she was just so relatable. I would love to actually see a movie. They we're suggesting that she does a movie about her life and I would really be interested to see that movie because honey, you know that Tokyo Tony. I would really be interested in that movie to see her story, her journey, how things started. I think it's important that we support positivity. We support women embracing their natural selves. I think that's what's happening with her. She's getting the support and it's pushed is propelling her to do more positive shit, to post more positive shit, right? Because she's um, a born again Christian. She removed the demon tattoo. Like, I just, I love to see it. I love stories like that because we hear so many stories about how people, you know, they just go down the wrong path and their life ends in like a sad death. But I love the fact that she's changed her life around. She's a positive example. She loves her children. She's a positive example for other, hopefully rappers and influencers who really out here look crazy because they're doing too much. So shout out to Angela White, formerly known as Black China. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section on these topics. Were you there? Were you an original Bad Girls Club viewer? But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Be sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful hump day. Get humped if you can. And I'll see you at the next one. Later. I do not want to get in trouble out here. This is Trump, everything, and the sheriff lives next door.